All right, this is topic one of our last minute lectures. We'll be talking about data privacy law, the principle of territoriality, generality, actus reus, and mens rea. We're using the 15 topics given by, uh, given by the Supreme Court. So we'll talk about All right. All right. When you say actus reus, you know where it comes from. The word act, uh, actus or rea guilty. When you say mens rea, you say guilty mind. All right. Uh, because rea, uh, you know, talks about guilt, na. So what does what do these words? mean they mean that you know when a crime is committed the elements of a mala in sex crime are a guilty act and a guilty mind take note the word guilty mind there is uh, seen in the revised penal code when you say when the law says with the intent to for example theft yeah it says that theft means taking of personal property without permission from the owner with the intent to gain. Uh, so taking of personal property with the intent to return it is not a crime under the revised penal code, which is mala in se, because there may it may look like there's a guilty act, but there's no guilty mind to it. Now differentiate that from a mala prohibita crime where the elements are just the guilty act. Alright. Now let's talk about the actus reus or the guilty or criminal acts penalized by the Data Privacy Act. Well, we have this one, unauthorized processing of personal and sensitive information. Accessing personal and sensitive information because of your negligence, kapabayaan, you know, you forgot to put your, uh, uh, what do you call that, security measures and people, unauthorized persons were able to view uh, personal and sensitive information. Um, well, of course, there's malicious disclosure or unauthorized disclosure of personal and sensitive information, unauthorized access or breach, and when there is an authorized access or breach, you have to report that to the Data Privacy Commission. And so, non-reporting of unauthorized access or unauthorized breach, uh, concealing the breach, is a crime based on the Data Privacy Act. And finally. So even if you don't need the data anymore, the improper disposal, or maybe you process the data for other purposes, that in itself is a crime under the Data Privacy Act. So let's just go through it so you won't get a little confused. The word processing, let's pick it up from there. So what does processing mean? Well, the law says it's an operation on data. You collect, you record, you organize, you retrieve or you destroy. So those are included in the processing. Processing of what? Well, talk about personal information. What is a personal information? It's an information where the identity of a person can be reasonably, directly, or uh, directly, indirectly, or reasonably ascertained if somebody holds that data or when data is put together. All right, so maybe if I have my uh, address, and uh, my name, if you put them together, yeah, you could personally, Id you could identify who that person is based on the data. Or it can be a sensitive personal information. Talks about race, ethnic origin, marital status, age, color, religious belief, health information, and information needed by the government. So maybe SSS number, license, or when the law says sensitive. So pretty much a lot of, uh, you know, it's a big vast of data over there if you notice maybe the color of uh, the car is not written here no car driven maybe it's not there but if you say car plate number maybe that could you know, directly identify me that is a personal information uh, you could also say that uh, if the car is neither plate number is registered in uh, LTO that could be sensitive personal information. So just take note: personal information is what would directly or certainly or reasonably identify the individual. 
sensitive personal information. Yeah, it's about ori race, ethnic origin, marital status. Yeah. All right. So does does the law say it prohibits collection of data? Well, no. It's not prohibited. The data privacy access process collection is allowed, but you know the principles of transparency, legitimate purpose, and proportionality, and the other laws allowing disclosure must be followed. No? So when you say legitimate pur purpose, for example, if a person enters your building, are you getting their ID numbers, phone numbers, uh, names, uh, temperature? Okay, maybe at this point in time, it is a legitimate purpose. Uh, so you follow that. And is it proportional? Is it necessary for the purpose? What is your purpose in getting the numbers? Uh, maybe for contact tracing, if somebody tests positive, all right, be sure it is proportionate, proportional to the purpose. It is not excessive. And you retain it only for as long as necessary to fill, fill the purpose. Maybe the number of these people, the, the, the phone number, the ID number, after 14 days, if your purpose is... Uh, um, for contact tracing, maybe after 14 days, you should destroy it already. Uh, take note that the statistical data can be stored longer. Now, say for example, in in your building, maybe you could get the st statistical data on how many men or women, male or female, enter the building at a sp specific date or time. So that that is a statistical data and can be st restored longer. Now. We talked about collecting it. Is it? Can you collect it? Yes, you can collect it. Is collection prohibited? No, it is not prohibited. But can you process it? Well, it's um, well, it's permitted only if not prohibited by law. All right. So I then, I generally, these are the conditions. You can process it if all right. The data subject consents. So. That's why if you, if you give a form, it should say, we're going to get your data, we will process it, you know, state the purpose, all right, and then say how long will you keep it, why are you processing it, so make sure that that person gives consent. Uh, so, for example, the person uh, does contact tracing, gives the number, gives his or her contact number and uh, temperature, uh, Purposes beyond that, you know, processing beyond that is without the consent. Well, unless you give your consent. Uh, unless the data subject says, okay, uh, you can use my number to send me promotional materials. Now, that's why in, in the internet, uh, before you enter a site, it would say, uh, uh, are you willing to receive pro promotional materials? All right. So, so when you get the data, the processing is prohibited unless the data subject consents that's just one just one exception uh second if well you can you can process if it is necessary to fulfill a contract or legal obligation so you have a loan applicant you get the number can you use that number to give it get the phone number or address give it to your loans collector yes if it is necessary to fulfill a contract or legal obligation uh you get the number and that there Per, uh, and somebody tests positive in your building, can you ask someone to process the, uh, use the phone number of that person in the logbook and call that person, say, okay, somebody tested positive, yes, because, you know, protect, uh, because uh, there's a vital interest. You protect, you want to protect the life and health of that data subject. You want to tell that data subject, okay, you have, maybe you want to have yourself tested because somebody tested positive in the, in the building. Mm, well, if ha you have to respond to a national in emergency or if there is a legitimate interest of the data controller, make sure it is a no it's a lawful non-commercial objective. Say maybe if uh, there was a burglary that happened in your building, use the number uh, to track people who may have been witnesses. Take note, it is a lawful non-commercial objective. So without this, you cannot process the information. Uh, take note, section 14 says, even if you subcontract the information, so for example, you're an app developer, you get all the data and you send it to a third person, or you're, if you're a loan, uh, if you're a bank, uh, and there are loan applicants and you send it to a third party loan collector, the data controller is responsible when the data is subcontracted. 
Now, what are the rights of the data subject? Well, the data subject must be informed that personal info is being processed. The scope, purpose, method, you know, uh, the duration of the storage. Uh, be you have to inform this data subject of his or her rights when the data is collected. That data subject must know that the data is with you, and so that data subject can dispute the accuracy of the data. Can say the data subject can say, okay, there's something wrong. You, you wrote my, you wrote a wrong phone number. Uh, I can remove that phone number, withdraw the use, or destroy. No? and I can even ask the data subject can assign uh, the data to the heirs. Say, for example, uh, NSO. Uh, if I die. Uh, of course, my heirs must be able to get my data from the NSO. That is to assign the data. And portability, again, let's use N NSO copy. If my data in this, the NSO and it's processed in a certain format, I should be able to get it. All right. Now, uh, maybe for school records, uh, if the da your data is in the school record, you should be able to get a copy. All right. If there's something wrong in your uh, transcript of records and you can prove it, you have the ability to to uh, amend that information. All right. And if I die, I can ask my heirs to get my diploma from my uh, from the school or transcript of records. Take note. There we go again. Statistical data. Um, statistical data can be kept longer. All right. So what now? A person who collects information say i'm yeah that building owner uh, i ask the security uh, i ask my security guards to collect data uh, for for from those who enter the building so what are my obligations my obligation is there are many look at it in section 20 but the general uh, idea is you implement reasonable appropriate organizational physical technical measures to protect personal information from well Unlawful destruction, alteration, disclosure, unlawful processing. Take note, there you go. It is a crime if there's an, an unauthorized access, uh, unauthorized disclosure, even malicious or unauthorized disclosure, wrong disposal. Um, yeah. And another one is if, like I said, if there is a breach of data, should inform the NPEC, National Privacy Commission of the Data Breach. Say, for example, your logbook in the guard, uh, in the basement, uh, in the lobby, where people write their names and addresses was stolen. Um, the law says that is data. Uh, you did a data collection. Um, there is uh, a breach. No? There is a breach uh, because it was disclosed to a thief. No? There is a disclosure to a thief, which is unlawful. You will have to report that breach to the National Privacy Commission even if it's just a logbook. All right, so that's your, that's uh, the mens rea and, um, uh, sorry, that is the actus reus. Those are the guilty or criminal acts penalized by the Data Privacy Act. These ones, one, two, three, four, and five. Now, We'll connect it to ter territoriality. What is territoriality? Well, territoriality says it's a general rule that penal laws in the Philippines are enforceable only in the Philippines. That's a general rule. There are exceptions. Uh, the exception is in Article 2, Revised Penal Code. Treaties, laws of preferential, you know, offenses committed in a Philippine ship or airship. Somebody counterfeits a coin. Obligations of the Philippine government, maybe in Hong Kong, Taiwan, uh, uh, public officers who are exercising their, perf their functions abroad and crimes against national security, you can prosecute these offenses even if they com they are committed outside the Philippines because of the principle uh, exception to the principle of territoriality. But take note, um, here it says treaties, laws of pre preferential application. Take note, the Data Privacy Act, if you look at section 6, there's an, there's an extraterritoriality provision. It says that you know, the, the the data the law can be enforced the data privacy can be enforced if Filipino citizens or residents data were processed even if abroad or data processing has a link to a Philippine entity so for example there is a Philippine entity and the data is collected and the store storage uh, databases you know and in, in Hong Kong or California or Filipino citizens data was processed and the data is 
is lodged or placed in uh, in California. The provisions of the Data Privacy Act says uh, the Data Privacy Act can be enforced even outside the Philippine borders. All right, so that is territoriality. Territoriality is penal laws are enforceable only in the Philippines as a general rule. There's an exception. All right, Article 2. We have another exception. We see it in the Data Privacy Act. And then let's go to the second one, generality. The general, ru uh, the general rule, the principle of generality says, penal laws will bind everyone who lives or sojourn in the Philippines. You know, Even if you're an uh, alien in the Philippines, Principle of generality says the penal law will bind aliens or foreigners in the Philippines. It makes sense, no? Territoriality. But take note, again, in Article 2, there is an exception. There's a loss of uh, treaties and loss of preferential application. We see Republic Act 75 where an ambassador or a public minister of a foreign state authorized and received by the Philippine president. And you have to be an ambassador public minister and you have to be received as such by the Philippine president and you know based on the performance of such functions this is uh, this is uh, from jurisprudence in the performance of the functions of the of a ambassador or public minister you cannot be arrested imprisoned or your goods or chattels distrained seized or attached but take note that uh, jurisprudence already says in the performance of public functions even if the RA seventy five does not say this. No? So if, if for example, you're an ambassador or public minister and you do a, uh, and you do a uh, act beyond the scope of your uh, function as such, then uh, then this R Republic Act seventy five will not uh, apply. And the general rule, which is all who live or sojourn, or sojourn in the Philippines, citizen or alien are bound by Philippine penal laws will apply. All right, so this is uh, topic one. We talked about the Data Privacy Act. We talked about the principle of actus reus, mens rea. We talked about territoriality and corresponding uh, principle of generality. If you have questions, you know, just type it on the chat box over there. Uh, I'll try to answer them. If not, make another video to further explain if you have questions. Thank you.